welcome everybody to Let's Talk College Football. Nothing but college football on this show. Coming up, we will have my review of my five picks from a week ago. Not too bad. And my five picks for this upcoming week. And also good, bad, and the ugly from what was the most exciting weekend of college football that we've seen in quite a while. But we begin, as always, with my thumbs up and thumbs down for the Big 12. Can I give a thumbs up to West Virginia? They find different ways to win and they remain undefeated. Might remember against BYU, it was the offense, but this week the defense, and they hold K State to under 300 total yards and a hard fought victory over the Wildcats. Thumbs up to Shock Wimwood. You know, for Baylor, it wasn't an easy game at all, but Shock Wimwood definitely made Baylor's rushing attack go with over 200 yards rushing and the Bears come from behind win in Ames against a pesky Cyclone team. And D.D. Westbrook was 100% in this game. I guess he had not been quite at full strength up until now, and he came through with a pair of touchdown catches, easily his best game of the year, as Oklahoma edges out TCU. And who says OSU's ground game's dead? It certainly wasn't against Texas this past Saturday, and it was the freshman, Justice Hill, coming through. You might remember Justice had a little bit of an issue with thumbelitis against Baylor in that loss a week ago. But last Saturday, he comes through big with over 100 yards rushing, and the Cowboys win against Texas, their first one against the Horns at home since 1997. And thumbs down to the Big 12 defenses last week that gave up at least 500 yards in their games. Talking about TCU, 534. Texas, 555 yards. Kansas, a whopping 621 yards allowed, including 548 on, on the air. And Iowa State, 647 yards, including 469 on the ground. All four of those teams lost. But even Oklahoma giving up 514 and Oklahoma State, who gave up 568, knows that those numbers cannot reoccur and become a habit. And if you didn't believe that the Washington Huskies were for real, well, believe it now. UW not only beat Stanford, but absolutely pulverized the previous unbeaten Cardinal, serving notice that Washington, if you watch my preseason show on the Huskies, you know that this is a team to be reckoned with. Take them seriously. Washington is legit. And a big reason why people think the Wolverines are legit is because of their defense. Jim Harbaugh's D it might be one of the best in the country. Even though Wisconsin's not an offensive juggernaut, Michigan still came ready to play in a typical Big Ten game. It was Michigan's D outshining Wisconsin's defense. Michigan hands Wisconsin their first loss of the year. And it's still early in the year, but North Carolina is not ready to relinquish their Coastal Conference Championship just yet. With a big win on the road against Atlantic Division foe Florida State, officially knocking the Seminoles out of playoff contention. Nick Weller's long field goal at the gun, gives UNC a crucial win in ACC play. Dobbs heaves it. They're bunched up in the end zone. It's tipped up. It's caught. It is caught. Jawan Jennings. You get the feeling this might be Tennessee season. Well, so far, they continue to win. After Georgia scored late to take the lead with 10 seconds to go, Tennessee with one final shot. And it was Josh Jobs and the Hail Mary to That's right, Jawan Jennings as Tennessee wins on the final play of the game to remain undefeated. Of course, this next week, they get to face an undefeated Texas A&M squad on the road. And if you watched last Saturday's game between top five teams in the country, Louisville and Clemson, you saw a classic. There were no losers in this one. This was a heck of a game. Clemson did jump out early, but... Third quarter, Louisville owned it. In fact, took the lead. But in the fourth quarter, Clemson showed why they're ACC champions with the touchdown, and they were able to retake the lead. Louisville, in the end, got within one yard of a first down, which would have given them first and goal very late in the game. But again, they fall yards shy inside the Clemson five, and Clemson wins the game by six, remaining on track to again win the ACC and be a part of the playoff. For Louisville, though, they're not out of this by any stretch. They can continue to win, including a game late in the year at Houston. Then the Cardinals will again pad their resume with an opportunity to get seriously back into the college football playoff discussion. From the beauty of that game to what was bad elsewhere, and that includes the Syracuse defense. Man, I thought the Big 12 were the only ones that couldn't play deep for the most part. That falls into the line with the Orange. Three losses this season. 
They've given up a combined 157 points. That's 52 points per loss, and they gave up 21 to Notre Dame in the first five minutes of the game. The Tennessee 47, two receivers left, one to the right. Eason steps up in the pocket, wants to go deep. He's hanging one long, and deep. He's got a man! Oh! Well, maybe Georgia didn't care at that point, but the reason why they're in the bad category, it's not because they lost, but it's what they did to set Tennessee up for the final play to make the Hail Mary a little less improbable. Of course, touchdown by Georgia with 10 seconds to go, but they're called for excessive celebration. That's 15 yards, so now Georgia has to kick off from their own 20, and then Georgia's offsides on the kickoff, so another five yards. So Tennessee gets one final play from the Georgia 42-yard line. That's right, from the 42 rather than from the Tennessee 38. Look at where Josh Dobbs throws this ball from. That's why those two penalties were significant. 20 extra yards for Tennessee to work with. Dobbs is throwing from his own 48. Ball lands five yards deep in the end zone. That's a throw of 57 yards. If those penalties are not enforced against Georgia, if Georgia doesn't commit those penalties, then essentially Dobbs would have had to have thrown the ball under the same scenario 77 yards. And do you think the same scenario is going to happen 20 yards further back? I don't think so. So Georgia, in the end, definitely aided Tennessee in that finish. And now we get to the ugly. That belongs to the Iowa Hawkeyes. A huge disappointment this year. You might be saying, well, your Sooners have already lost twice. Yeah, but at least my Sooners lost to a couple of top five teams in the country in Houston and in Ohio State. So there you have it. No excuse for Iowa losing at home to Northwestern. They're not an offensive juggernaut. In fact, they're typically an offensive handicap. We know this because the Wildcats had only averaged 16 points per game entering their showdown in Iowa City and had only won one game out of their first four. That's right. Northwestern only had scored 65 total points after four games. Yet they managed on the road to score 38 against the Hawkeyes, who last season didn't lose a regular season game. And now the Hawkeyes have already lost two, both at home. And we haven't even reached the second weekend of October. It is time now to review last week's selections, and for yours truly, it was a pretty good week. It documented three wins and two losses against the spread, and that did include the Clemson Tigers, who came through as an underdog, not only covering, but also winning the game outright by six points. Way to go, Tigers. The Battle of Armed Forces, Air Force came out on top, doubling what their projected uh, spread was, which was seven, winning by 14 against Navy. And OU versus TCU, 69.5, seemed like a low total. And I was right, as the two combined for nearly 100 points, they combined for 98. So that was a master lock there as far as the total. So there were my three wins. My two losses, yeah, I had Texas as an underdog, and so much for the trend as far as the road team winning in that rivalry every year since 2009. That streak finally came to a close, and it costed me as Oklahoma State won and won easily. And Michigan was a 10.5-point favorite, and I should have known that when you have two good defenses in the Big Ten facing each other, 10.5 is a trap, and I fell for the bait. Michigan won by, by only seven, so that was a loser for me. Again, three and two, I'll take it. And for the year, I documented 11 wins and nine losses. Now, one thing you'll notice this week about my picks, for the most part, I'm really going off recent trends in terms of the matchups. For example, Alabama and Arkansas You'll notice that Bama's a 14-point favorite. I like Arkansas to cover, though. Give me the 14 for the Razorbacks. Biggest reason is because the Razorbacks recently have played the Crimson Tide pretty tough, including last year. So the game being at the Razorback State this time, Alabama probably wins, but 14 for this SEC West showdown is too many points, so give me the Razorbacks plus the 14. OU versus Texas, the Red River rivalry. And if you've already seen my pregame for this matchup on this very channel. First, thank you. But secondly, you'll notice that I really think it'll be a high-scoring game. And right now, they've got the uh, total at 73 and a half. I like the Sooners to win 41 to 35, and therefore, that's 76 points. So I'm going with the over, and I'm going to make it one of my five selections. So give me the over in the OU Texas game. 
Oklahoma State, when they're at home against Iowa State, seem to win and seem to win handily against the Cyclones. 17 seems like a lot of points. But remember, Cowboy offense is pretty good. And Iowa State, even though they played tough against Baylor, probably should have won that game, you have to wonder about a hangover and how they're going to approach this game. I think Oklahoma State flattens them. So give me Oklahoma State minus a 17. Now, TCU at Kansas. And one thing we know about the Jayhawks, even though they stink, and even though they got blown out against Texas Tech, for some reason, when they play TCU, they play the Horned Frogs tough. At least the last two years, that's been the case. And you can make an argument that the last two years, Kansas should have won this game. TCU will win, of course, this year with the game in Lawrence. But 29 points, especially with TCU, speaking of hangovers, coming off that heartbreaking loss to the Sooners, TCU will win, but not by 29 points. So give me the Jayhawks plus the 29. And finally, are they going to play this game? Well, if Hurricane Matthew has anything to say about it, probably not. But as of Thursday morning, this game between the Seminoles and Miami, a big game in the ACC, it's still on. Okay, and by the way, all of our prayers going to all those who have been impacted so far uh, by Hurricane Matthew. I know evacuations are very heavy along the southeast coast of our country. So again, prayers to all those dealing uh, with um, Hurricane Matthew. Uh, talking about Florida State at Miami, the game itself. Right now, uh, Miami under Mark Rich. Got to like the way this team's playing. They're giving three Florida State. They already lost twice this year. Both conference losses. So you wonder, even though it's a state rivalry, you have to wonder where they're at mentally. Miami has a lot to play for. So give me the Hurricanes minus the three. And hopefully they'll be able to play this game. But uh, right now, with that hurricane bearing in on the southeast coast of the country, um... Who knows if they're going to get that game in, but the most important thing is uh, pray for those um, who are being impacted right now. And again, evacuations are, are very high. Well, that will do it for this edition of Let's Talk College Football. Don't forget my post game at Bowie, Texas sometime on Saturday evening. Thanks for watching.